Hey everybody, Davies Tallow coming at you with another Rocky Mount Rankings. On this nice, lovely day. Today is December 12th. So when you see this, it'll be December 13th. So hopefully tomorrow will be nice too. But today, nice and sunny. Not too cold, but it's not really too warm. Kind of, you know, if you go out there for a few minutes, it's all right. But uh, otherwise, you don't want to stay out there. Uh, and even though it was dry and hot this past summer, I wish we I wish we were back in summer. I really do. Or at least fall, early fall. Fall around here was really nice, really comfortable. Got things done when I things I couldn't get done when it was hot. But at least when it's hot, you tend to want to get out more than when it's cold. So, but anyway, enough of the weather. Today, we're going to be ranking another one of my all-time favorite bands, the band that uh, go all the way back to the 1980s, early 80s. I don't know about when I really got into them. And that band is none other than ZZ Top. The mighty ZZ Top. And... Uh, uh, best best wishes and uh, condolences and go out to Frank and uh, and Billy, you know, for, uh, loss of uh, Dusty. Dusty was a great guy. I never knew him personally, but just, you know, hearing what people had to say about him, you know, and on videos and stuff, you know, Great loss to the music world, and uh, you know, with my condolences go out to his family as well. May he rest in peace. You know, he's up in the up in the uh, uh, fields of green and gold, playing and rocking, rocking out with everybody else. Uh, uh, also, uh, up there with two other. members of ZZ Top. Where is it here? Oh, I'm on the wrong page here. Uh-oh. I really got company. But anyway, he proceeded in death by two other members of the original band. And of course, a lot of people say, well, there's no other original members. Well, there was. Uh, if you go back to their beginnings, there was, uh, where is it? Lanier Gre uh, Krieg played bass and organ in 1969. He passed away in 2013. And, uh, yeah. yeah, he's the only one that, there is Billy Etheridge, who played with him from 69 to 70. And uh, Dan Mitchell, who played, uh, let's see, yeah, Billy Etheridge, he played bass, and Dan Mitchell played drums in 1969. So, well, Lanier Krieg, or Greg, 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 I'm sorry, mispronouncing it, apologies. He passed away in 2013. But, you know, for the most part, Billy, Dusty, and Frank stayed, you know, longest surviving band ever uh, with original members. Um, you know, a lot of people, well, what about these other guys? Well, let's say, put, let's put it this way. Right before they started their uh, recordings, it was this uh, Billy, Dusty, and Frank. So, there you go. <laughs> but anyway, 
Should we get on to it here? And we're going to start out with the rankings here. There's 15. In fact, they've, uh, from what I read here and from what I understand, there's going to be a 16th album coming out. And Dusty uh, had already put his bass on there. So he'll be on the new album. Um, though, let's see. See is a uh, guitar, his bass guitar tech, Elwood Francis, will be playing bass. I'm assuming on the tour. Uh, Dusty wanted them to continue, so it's not like they're saying, "Well, we're not. We're just continue on." They're adhering to his wishes, Billy and Frank. He wanted the band to continue, and you know, a lot of people, you know, they don't want things to end when they pass away, you know. Uh, they want things to continue, you know. They want their friends and the band bandmates to continue on. So that's, they're honoring Dusty's wishes. But I know there's going to be people out there that's going to be upset. How dare they do this? There's only one way, one's easy top, and uh, that's with the original members. So, anyway. Uh... Getting into it here, released, let's see, number, fifth, number 15, released October 1990, that'll be Afterburner. Trying to get it in here without, you got a window right here next to me, and it shines. But anyway. Even though this is, a, you know, it's, I still consider it a decent album. It's just I don't go to it often. Um, got some good tracks on it. Uh, Concrete and Steel is okay. The only one that stands out to me on here that I really like is My Head's in Mississippi. Uh, Love and Thing, Penthouse Eyes, Tell, tell It, okay. Decision, decision or Collision, you know. Give It Ups, okay, 2000 Blues, Burger Man, <laughs> Double Back. Uh, not really, uh, don't really grab me, but I enjoy them. So the moon has to be at the right angle and the sun has to be at uh, the 30th parallel, whatever. <laughs> but still, a must for anybody's ZZ Top collection. That's Recycler. Okay, moving right along here. This next one, again, okay. And again, it's not one of my favorites, though it has, you know, some good songs. Released uh, 1972 by London Records. Ever heard of it? I'm going to start... Excuse me. I'm going to start putting these over here. Oh. Real Grand Mud. Or Real Grandy Mud, whatever. Again, decent album. Uh, solid playing. Francine's good. Just got paid. Um, another mainstay of their uh, concerts. Mushmouth Shoutings, all right. Coco Blues, good. Chevrolet, apologies to Pearly, barbecue, sure got cold after the rain fells, good, whiskey, Ma whiskey and mama, down brownie, <laughs> kind of dig that one, but it's, uh, you know, this is their second album, it shows that they're trying to, they're finding their way, they're feeling their way, trying to decide what direction what sound they're going to have but they still haven't found it here uh, but still a must for your ZZ Top collection so okay 
moving right along. Okay, now this one, um, when I first heard it, it was kind of a, a shock. No, it took a little bit of get used to. I mean, on this one, they got their, they're really going flat out with a lot of heavy blues. So, uh, Released September 20, 2012. Their last, their most recent, their last album, La Futura. I guess that's how you pronounce it, La Futura. Uh, you like heavy rock, uh, blues rock? This is for you. I don't mind heavy blues rock. It's not my favorite genre, but I dig it, you know. Uh, but I got to get paid. When I first heard that, I'm like, whoa, Billy's getting really down and dirty here. <laughs> uh, Charter. This next song I cannot pronounce. First, I need to get I gotta get glasses. I have a hard time reading this small print here. Chartreuse. I guess that's how you pronounce that. But anyway, it's good. Consumption is good. Over over you. Heartache blues. I don't want to lose lose you. Flying high, okay. It's too easy. Mariana, big shiny, shiny nine. That's pretty good. Have a have a little mercy. You know, good, solid, bluesy rock. So, there's, there's the band. Like you said, you know, again, rest in peace, Dusty. We're gonna miss you. I know your bandmates are going to miss you, your family, especially your family. But anyway, it's number 13, La Futura. Okay, number 12, number 12. Number 12, another album, you know, Decent album, released uh, 1996. Uh, their last al album with longtime producer Bill Ham, Rhythm Mean. Another heavy blues rock. You know, Rhythm Mean, the title song is really really in there bang bang black fly what's up with that vincent price blues uh no surprise in the last for the last 20 years of i've no i know of 20 or 20 two songs that uh, involve vincent price this one and uh one by deep purple so a lot of people like vincent price well, and so do I. So, uh, zipper job, hairdresser. You know, continue with their comical style here. She's just got. She's just killing me. My mind's gone. Loaded. Pretty head. Humbucking part two. Where's Where's part one? That's what I want to know. But anyway, good solid bluesy rock album. Um. There's the band again. You know, it, the th you know the the thing is with you know their later, their more recent albums. Uh, not too much got 
play their, their concerts, you know, off these albums. You know, I, I may be wrong, uh, but I don't know. But anyway, for the main number 12. Okay, move along here. Okay. Now this album, even though it's coming at number 11, yeah, number 11, yeah. I have to double check that. <laughs> um, this could go up further. I haven't listened this to, to this album too much. Uh, back there, just recently uh, completed my ZZ Top collection with this and another album uh, just recently. I thought I'd better uh, do that. I've been wanting to do it for quite a while. <laughs> anyway, this, this album could move up with time, but right now, it's in that area where I'm just not sure where I want to put it, so I'm putting it at number 11. And that's uh, released September 2003, Mescalero. So if you look on here, you can see the guy is right there. <laughs> I'm assuming that's them. It's got to be them. But uh, this album is... Still, you know, got the signature on it, but it is different and a little bit in the sound, especially Mescalero. Two way, two ways to play: alligator, alligator, buck naked. You know, got to love these names they come up with. Going so good, me so stupid. Pieces, punk ass boyfriend. <laughs> Good one, stacking pa yeah, stacking paper. Kind of makes you wonder if that's what they did before they got you know started getting big here. You know, it was their second secondary job, stacking paper somewhere. <laughs> Just kidding. What would you do? What it what it is, kid? Uh, Q last last of my. I guess that's how you pronounce that. Tramp, crunchy, dusted liquor. Hey, tramp, crusty, dusted liquor. What a way to end an album. <laughs> I, I didn't realize. <laughs> I didn't realize that till now. You know, crunchy, dusted liquor. Kind of makes you wonder, huh? <laughs> they opened a bottle up. The fact I can tell you. I'm sorry, I'm just a, a past experience, not personal experience, but a past experience with, with somebody uh, close to me. Uh, I'm not going to name them, but I'm sorry, I got to tell the story. I was at a party. Well, it wasn't really a party, but it was a get together, and we were in my friend's basement, and we were playing hacky sack. This is back in the mid '80s, and there's a whole bunch of us, and there's my sister was with us, and her friend, you know, just having a good time. Well, I'm not going to say who did this, but somebody, there was a bottle of, an old bottle of beer sitting in the window. And in this bottle was not only a little bit of stale beer, but there was uh, tobacco spit and cigarettes in this bottle. And this person reached over, grabbed the bottle, and took a drink. And we could not believe what was happening. But anyway, needless to say, they, uh, it, it was kind of gross. But I'm not going to name names, but a uh, little funny little story. So, 
and it makes you know gives them new meaning to crunchy dusted liquor because I'm sure there's a lot of dust in there too in the basement unfinished basement of that but anyway come in that uh, yeah number 11 mescalero with the crunchy dusted liquor okay All right, this next album, you know, more blues, more heavy blues, not quite as heavy as uh, the Futura, the Futura and Rhythming, but uh, it's getting there. Released September 1999. Like I said, I get glasses. But... Another, you know, this is a good, good, you know, and I, like I said, I like all these albums, so don't get me wrong. Number 10, Triple X. You know, Pork Chop Sandwich, fix, Crucifix a Flat. Uh, yeah, Crucifix a Flat. Fearless Boogie, 36, 22, 36. Made into a movie, beatbox, trippin', dream, uh, dread to mom, boogala, <laughs> I guess that's dread mom, boogala, uh, live intro by Ross Mitchell, Sin Pusher, let me be your teddy bear, maybe a little, uh, I know Dusty was an uh, Elvis fan. I'm sure Frank and Billy were too. So maybe a little shout out to the king there. Uh, hey, Mr. Millionaire and Belt Buckle. Good, solid album. Oh. So we got here. The only thing that sucks about CDs trying to get these little booklets out of here. Oh, for heck's sakes. It doesn't want to come out. Okay. I'm not going to try to force it. I'll just end up ruining it. But anyway. Good one. Hang on a sec. Okay. Sorry about that. A little pause there. Had a relative come over. I had to go out and say hi, see what was going on. In fact, I thought my mom was knocking on the door. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, yeah, Triple X. Like that great album. Number yeah, number 10. Uh, now, number 9. Back to the earlier stuff. Uh, let me change my view here. Another, well, this album does get a lot of love, from what I understand. But anyway, uh, released November 1976. Talking Tejas. And also the uh, Spanish name for Texas, from what I understand. And for, but the thing is, for, for years, I didn't know how to say that word. I, I kept saying, uh, Tejas, Tejas. I said, well, it was a net oil. So it's the term, uh, Spanish term for Texas. So I started saying, well, okay, so is that Texas? Well, then finally I fat figure, uh, heard somebody else say it, uh, Tejas. So I guess that's the way you say it. If not, I apologize. But anyway, good album. Uh, a lot more stuff I like on this one. Uh, it's only love. Rested while driving blind, like that one. El Diablo's good one. Snappy khaki. Enjoy, enjoy and get it on. Ten dollar man. 
uh, Pan Am Highway Blues, Avalon Highway, She's a Heartbreaker, Asleep in the Desert. You know, good rock, rock and roll, country flavor, bluesy flavor. But yeah, I enjoy this album. Uh, but like I said, a lot of people uh, I've heard talk about don't give it a lot of love. But anyway, definitely, you know, all like I said, all these albums are definite mainstay in your collection. But anyway, Teos, number nine. Okay. Number eight. Another recent acquisition. I said I got uh, Mescalero just recently, and this album, this recent, top off my collection. Released, see, where is it? Released in 1994. Um, antenna. I was just listening to this earlier. Um, and it reminds me more of you know, the late seventies, early eighties stuff. It's less, uh, to me, less bluesy, bluesy rock flavor. Uh, but it's, like I said, it's more in that vein of the early eighty or late seventies, early eighties. Uh, pin cushion, break away, world of swirl, fuzzbox voodoo. Girl in T-shirt, Antenna Head, good song, PC, PCH, Cherry Red, Cover Your Cover Your Rig, L Lizard Life, Deal Going Down, everything, you know, great songs. Well, I heard them a few times, but what I, you know, they come off great, you know. So this. Later on, if I did this, you know, it could move up more. But right now, it's at number eight, but that doesn't diminish that it's still a good, solid album. It's got, uh, I wonder if I can get the booklet out of this one. Probably not. Oh, there we go. There they are. You know, that's great stuff. It's got more, a little bit more of uh, more pictures in it. And though I don't like vinyl too much, I will agree, uh, agree that it gives you more information you know, it's more accessible, let's put it that way. You know, getting these booklets out of these CDs kind of sucks, but at the same time, <laughs> these take up less, less space than an album. You know, may not, you know, long-wise and edge, you know, but edge-wise, you know, about the same. But anyway, antennas, number eight. Yeah, number eight. Okay. Next album came out about the time that I was starting to get interested in ZZ Top. But, uh, this was late 1981. Album that, uh, another album that seems to get a lot of love by fans. But anyway, that's uh, El Loco. You can see it there. The sun's kind of, I think, gone behind some clouds, but. Still a good, you know, a good, strong album, even though it doesn't get a lot of love. Uh, Tube State Boogie, I remember hearing that on the radio. Love it. Want to Drive You Home. Ten Foot Pole, good one. Leela. Don't Tease Me, It's So Hard. Pearl Necklace. Of course, another radio mainstay. 
groovy little hippie pad. Heaven, hell, or Houston. Bizarre. You know, it's not really a song. It's more like a tune with somebody talking. I don't know if it's uh, Frank, Dusty, or Billy. <laughs> Uh, Party on the Patio, great song, but yeah, may not be one of their biggest hits, but uh, still a good album, uh, not much in the booklet, but yeah, El Loco, number seven. Now this next one. It's their last release of the 19, uh, from the 1970s. It's also an album that I have a heck of time pronouncing a name. So if I get this right, or if I get this right, if I get this right, I'll be amazed. If I get it wrong, forgive me. But I've, I've heard it pronounced, but, but anyway. Release nor. November 1979, Degello, I guess that's how you pronounce it. If not, too bad. That's the way I pronounce it today. Um, good solid album. You know, I thank you. She loves my automobile. Uh, ever notice that you know how? CZ Top has quite a few songs about automobiles. You know, they have one on Chevrolet, and uh, what was another one they had here, you know? Oh, maybe some of the other ones. But anyway, uh, I'm Bad, I'm Nationwide, another rockin' song, The Full Fear Stockings, Manic Mechanic, you know. There you go, song of... Mechanic, I guess, you know, unless you're t talking about farm equipment or something. It's probably, you know, about cars. Uh, strange song. Another, you know. But it's a good one. Dust My Broom. Traditional bluesy uh, song. Blues-based. Low down, low down the Streets. High Fawn Mama. Cheap Sunglasses. Esther Be The One. You know. Another great album by the Zeesters. Uh, but yeah, definitely you know, another mainstay in anybody's collection. Degello. At number six. Now we're in the top five. Five at five. So it's not, got an hour to go before five. Now I gotta get this done. So anyway, moving right along. Now this album, I'm, I remember my sister having it on 8-track. I remember seeing it and I'm like, this is strange. I mean, this doesn't seem like Z, uh, ZZ Top, you know. But then again, is their beginnings. Uh, released, or is it? January 16th, 1971 on London Records. London-based. ZZ Top's first album. Now you want a blues-filled album. This is the album for you. It means solid rock blues, you know, heavy blues. You know, you can tell where they, they started out. And of course, I think Billy started out playing in other blues bands. I don't know about Dusty or, uh, or Frank, but I thought somebody else been somebody else been shaking your tree, brown sugar, squank, going down to Mexico, old man, neighbor, neighbor, certified blues, bedroom thing. Just got back from babies, backdoor love affair, 
I mean, solid rock, bluesy based album. I mean, when I first heard it on 8 track, I really wasn't into that kind of stuff. You know, that's kind of what made me stay away from the earlier ZZ Top stuff. I was, you know, when I first got into ZZ Top, I was into, you know, the Eliminator and stuff like that. But, you know, when, as the older you get, the more sophisticated you become. So this is, you know, I love listening to this album. Uh, it's just great. But anyway, definitely get it. CC Top's first album. Number five at five. Or number five at four. Okay. <laughs> All right, moving right along. Okay, now this next album, another album, doesn't got, get a lot of love from uh, ZZ, ZZ Top purists. Uh, and with, you know, that's it, with a lot of bands, after a while you'll get certain camps. So, you know, not well, not, you know, not with everybody, but with certain bands. When they change their sound a little bit or tweak it or, you know, you'll get people who like the earlier stuff but hate the later stuff and people who like later stuff but hate the earlier stuff. Me, when I was younger, yeah, I could have fit in one of those camps. But now, give me it all. I mean, there's nothing, as far as I'm concerned, it's just different. It's different uh, stuff they've tried out. You know, if you don't try something out, you're never going to know. So anyway, released 1985. Talking, of course, Afterburner. Now I agree, you know, this is loaded with Synthesizers and stuff, and electronic gadgetry, gadgetry, or. But as far as I'm concerned, it they is what they wanted to do. It, they tried it out, and you know, decided later on, you know, they wanted to go back to more traditional stuff. But still, it to me, this is too many great songs. Sure, it may maybe could done. To, they could have done it better uh, another way or something, but it still works. Sleeping Bag. Stages, love that song. Woke Up With Wood. <laughs> another fantastic song. Rough Boys, you know, it's not one of my favorites. Can't Stop Rockin', love it. Planet of Women. Probably my all-time favorite from this album. I love it. It's just rockin', gets, just gets you going. I got the message, Velcro Fly, different, but still good. Dipping Low in the Lap Luxury, Delirious, another great song. I mean, just uh, just good, solid rock, hard, hard driving rock and roll, you know, with a uh, techno twist, let's put it that way. But I just, you know, a lot of people don't say it's too too many too much uh, synthesizers. Too many, you know, it just turns them off. But to me, I I don't see anything wrong with it. So anyway, afterburner number four. Okay. Okay, now this album, I know when I say what, it's, what it is, a lot of people are going to be wondering, are you serious? You're putting this at number three? Number three, Davies? Really? Well, 10, 15 years ago, it would probably be number one. And don't get me wrong, I love this album. 
has got two of my favorite all-time ZZ Top songs. Um, but right now, you know, it, it, you know, and it could change places, you know, later on, but right now it's number three, released March 3rd, or yeah, March 3rd, March 23rd, 1983 on Wonder Brother Records, talking about Eliminator, the album that got me going full-blown ZZ Top. Fantastic album, you know. It's a break, you know. This this really their breakthrough album. You know, give me all your loving, and got me under uh, got me under pressure. Uh, Sharp dressed man, three of my top songs. Sharp dressed man. If I was do uh, rankings of the uh, ZZ top songs. Sharp dressed Sharp dressed man would be my number one. Number one. Uh, I need your. I need you tonight. I got six legs. Thug. TV dinners. Dirty dog. If I could only flag her down. Bad girls. It's chock full of classic ZZ Top stuff. Of course, you know, again, a lot of people say, "Well, this is when they were starting to go their electronic techno synth phase." Yes, it's got that stuff on there, but it works. It adds to it. If it has to it, do it. I know back in the early 80s, I had friends say, you know, that if it's got synthesizers on it, we're not interested in it. I'm not interested in it. You know, like Rush, you know, they were, when they were going electronic and stuff like that, a lot of people were, you know, shying away from that. You know, they wanted to stay purists. I'm like, why? You know, if it works, if it adds to it, do it. But, you know, there's those people that just, well, let's put it like this. You got people that don't like CDs, uh, swear by vinyl. I'm, I'm sure right now there's people out there that have nothing but vinyl. And when vi that, now that vinyl's making a big comeback, they're loving it. So they say, we were right. Well, no, you weren't right. We're, they're just providing you with vinyl because you want vinyl. And, you know, there's money to be made in it. If there wasn't money to be made in it, they wouldn't be doing it. But uh, vinyl is all right, but I, if you could take it in your car, fine. Of course, nowadays we've got, you know, thankfully we've got waves of transferring over to digital. But still... Transferring these over to a SD card or something, or flash drive, is a lot easier. But anyway, number three, Eliminator. Okay. All right. Top two. Now, like with everything... These albums, they could change places a week from now. But, you know, when I was looking at both these, I'm like, okay, which one's going to be number one, which is going to be number two? Tough decision, but one's going to be number one. I suppose I could uh, always say, well, they're both number one. And... To be honest, they are. But being the rankings, one's got to be number two. So anyway, released July 1973. It basically the album that started, you know, got the band going big time. And there's, of course, Trace Ombres. I remember back in the, when I, in the 80s, I wasn't really in love with this album. A lot of the earlier stuff from ZZ Top, it just really didn't do anything for me. And, you know, when you're young, only certain things click. 
But when you get older, things start clicking. You know, don't you know? I, like I said, I still love Eliminator, Afterburner, but this clicks more with me now. I mean, uh, waiting for the bus. Jesus just left Chicago. Uh, great song, go, you know, mainstay of their uh, live concerts. Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers, fantastic song. Master Sparks, strange tune. Uh, from what I understand, a true story about Billy getting a, into some sort of uh, steel drum or something and being dragged down the road. And some Master Sparks. Uh, Hot Blue and Righteous, moving on down the line, Precious and Grace, uh, Lagrange, Lagrange, of course, uh, Chic, uh, Have You Heard, you know, great. This, one, this one's got uh, an expanded uh, bonus tracks, uh, live version of Wait for the Bus, Jesus, left, Jesus Just Left Chicago and Lagrange. Great uh, threesome right there. You know, in fact, I love those more than the studio tracks. I mean, it's just hard driving rock, bluesy rock. I mean, showing that these guys were finally, finally, fi finally finding their sound on this album. Of course, you got the. Uh, I'm not one for Mexican food. <laughs> that right there, this uh, maybe the beer, but the rest of it doesn't appeal to me. But anyway, there's the band. Like a Billy there. Right here. <laughs> Just a slight uh, shatter. Five o'clock shadow. Of course, this is back before they uh, started growing their beards. In fact, from what I understand, they didn't start growing their beards until uh, after like 1977. And they're on the back. There's Billy right here. <laughs> you know, Dusty, he's got a beard, but not as much as he would later on later on down the line but good solid album love it Trace Hombres number two of course now if you were a ZZ Top fan you know what number one is and number one released in 1975 Fandango. Now, remember the first time I heard this album, I didn't hear the whole, hear the whole thing. But my sister bought it home. One of her friends let her borrow the eight-track tape. And, of course, Tush, she played Tush, you know, uh, Backdoor Medley. Didn't hear it a lot, you know, because she kept playing Tush. Tush was the big thing back then. Uh, but anyway, uh, Thunderbird, Jailhouse Rock, Backdoor Medley, Fantastic, uh, Nasty Dogs and Funky Kings, Blue Jean Blues, Great Blues Guitar Rock, uh, Bellinese, Favorite, I love it. Mexican Blackbird, Heard It on the X, Tush. This has got bonus tracks, Heard It on the X, Jailhouse Rock, and Tush. Uh, all live. Uh, more, you know, of course, Jailhouse Rock, you get it on here twice. Let's see, was it on here twice? Yeah. Two different recordings, live recordings. 
of course, you know, half the album's live, half the album's studio, but still, it's just ZZ Top coming into power. You know, just right, you know, rising, you know, it's just incredible. Guys rocking out. Of course, Billy's kind of getting his, growing his beard, but this is still before he decided to grow him big, bushy. And that shadow on uh, Billy's. Makes him look like a Vulcan uh, on his uh, eyebrow there, his left eyebrow. But, you know, stuff like, you know, ZZ Top doesn't get better any better than this. You know, it's just classic. In fact, let me show you something here. This is ZZ Top's first annual Texas size romp and stompin' barn dance and barbecue. So Austin, summer 74, with 80,000 friends. Right there. Don't know what stadium that is, but. They know how to throw a, par they know how to throw a party, don't they? But, well, there you have it. CZ Top. Uh, one through, uh, uh, least liked to the most liked, if you want to put it that way. But again, I love them all. I, I listen to them all. It's just some more than others. And that could flip at any given time. So... Anyway, recap. Bandego number one. Number two. Trace Hombres. Number three. Eliminator. Number four. Afterburner. Number five. First album. Number six. The Gallo. Number seven, El Loco. El Loco. Number eight, Antenna. Number nine, Tejas. Number ten, Triple X. That's not rated Triple X. <laughs> Number eleven, Mescalero. Number 12, Rhythmine. Number 13, La, Fru La, La Futura. Number 14, Rio Grande Mud. And number 15, Recycler. Great stuff. You like blues, you like rock, you like combo. Fantastic stuff, you know. People who get on this bag that say, oh, there's this another crap band that doesn't mean a thing. <laughs> you're, too, you're too sophisticated in your likes. You need to loosen up. You need to get out there and test other things. ZZ Top is one of the best, and they always will be with me. And like I said earlier, when we lost Dusty. Sad day for everybody, you know. But I'm glad they're honoring his wishes and continuing on. Can hardly wait to hear the their next album. Of course, it's been uh, 
be 10 years since La, Fu La Futura came out. So, of course, they pay their dues. They really don't need to put out a lot of stuff. You know, I, I would love if they did, but uh, that's them, you know. They can relax, kick back. When they decide to, put one out, and we'll be waiting. I guess it also helps to help, you know, gets us to, you know, really wanting to get the next album. And it's not like, well, oh, it's easy to have to put another album out. Oh, okay, maybe I'll get it, maybe I won't. But now we're like, hey, they're putting a new album out. I can hardly wait. Yeah. And I can hardly wait to see what they're going to come out with. But anyway, thank you for joining me. Uh, please subscribe, please. It would be so much appreciated. Like the video, leave a comment down below, uh, leave your own uh, rating, ranking the albums. I'll let see what you got, you know, what you like, what your number one is, number two, and so on. Um, maybe get a conversation going. You know, and the main reason I'm doing this is, excuse me, get people, get, uh, get knowledge out there, get people uh, uh, interested in these bands. Go and check, the, you know, if you don't, know what ZC is like or if you only heard a few of their songs and the ones they play on the radio all the time there's so much more to this band there's so much more to all these bands I mean just this than what's played on the radio check them out on YouTube or YouTube music listen to it but check it out at least give it a try you got nothing to lose but a few minutes of your time and you may just find another band. I, like I've said before on other videos, I've discovered so many bands that I just love and revere now. You know, thanks to people like Pete Pardo and and uh, oh, you know, every, God, I can't think of his name now. <laughs> Bryce, Bryce. I'm sorry, Bryce. If you see this, I apologize. Bryce knows metal. Uh, a whole bunch of people that, you know, fantastic, you know, reviewing albums and stuff. Give you knowledge. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is fun. I mean, it gets you interested in new things. So, but anyway, um, check it out. Check them out. And, uh, Coming up uh, later on the week, I've got some things going. Okay. Yeah, Tuesday I'll be talking about uh, Dave Gilmore, uh, his last album, or at least a few years ago. Uh, that's some stuff I'm hopefully going to, know I've been saying this before, but... Uh, Friday night is going to be reviewing uh, Game of Thrones. It's coming 17th, uh, Friday the 17th. Uh, then uh, next Sunday. On the bookie joint, I'll be doing uh, uh, Young Jedi Knights uh, book series. Then uh, Monday, next Monday, uh, I'll be doing uh, albums of Genesis, ranking them. But there I'm going to be going, doing uh, their albums from the first to Wind and Weathering. After that, I've listened to those albums that come out, you know, Abacab and Duke and all those. Not interested. I don't do a thing for me. I've give I've given them a try. I just cannot get into them. But from Wind and Weathering on back, I'm going to review uh, doing ranking those albums on the twentieth, twenty uh, second. I'll do you know twenty second. I'll do my top ten prog rock bands. 
not prog metal, but prog rock. You know, of course, some will probably be considered metal, but uh, we'll see what we can come up with there. Then the uh, following Friday, on Friday Night Flicks, I'm going to do Dan the Daniel Boone series, original series, with Fess Parker. And then I'm going to do. Uh, Bookie join on the 26th, day after Christmas. We'll be doing uh, Lost Regiment book series. I gotta get glasses. <laughs> I cannot see the small writing here. Okay. Ranking, Rocky Mountain Rankings on 27th, ELO. Ranking the albums of ELO, and I'll be doing all the albums on that one because I love all the albums. Uh, Free Fall, Tuesday, 29th, I'll be doing bands I got into in uh, 2021, quite a few. And then I'll end it up with uh, Friday Night Flicks on New Year's. That one I was kind of wondering what I was going to do, but I decided I'm going to do Star Wars. I'm gonna, I got a lot of a bit to say about Star Wars. Um, I haven't seen the new one, so I'm not going to be talking about those. I'll be talking about the original ones, the original six. Uh, but yeah, but that's what I got planned. Things change, but that's why I, I put down here. So anyway, everybody, have a good uh, day, evening, and uh, we'll see you later.